All right. Okay, everybody. Well, yeah, welcome to Over 50 starting over Friday, April 22nd, 2022. I'm Barry Edwards. And I'm Merle Garrison. Yeah, how are yeah. you this morning, man? Doing good, man. How about yourself? Really, really good. Um, you look good. I like your uh, shirt. Thanks. Hey, thanks, dude. Little, little self, advertising going on. Shameless advertising. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and if you're listening to this, I'm wearing my edwardscom.net t-shirt. And I've been meaning to make us over 50 starting over t-shirts and it always slips my mind. Oh, you know what? It's funny you're saying that, too. I forgot to mention this. Anne-Marie had this idea about uh, creating these over 50 starting over mugs with our logo that you created. Mm -hmm. She she was like, oh, I need I need a file for the for the logo. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. She had that idea that several weeks ago It may have already passed. But she had it like all propped up. Like she, it looked pretty cool. I, I would love to drink out of a mug, an over that's 50 a, starting over mug. That's a good thought. I do need my, like, I work so hard to get this particular mug that is both microwavable and insulated and glass, not plastic. Hard to uh, find something like that. Really? It, you know, it keeps my coffee and tea warm longer. And, yeah. and like I said, microwavable, so it's not plastic. You're not, you know. Is that what you're drinking is uh, coffee through that? Uh, I start with coffee in the morning. Yeah. And then I go to the gym and I come back and I go to tea. And as a matter of fact, right now I have a Lipton detox tea, which is mostly dandelion. Okay. And black tea combined. Is it, is it warm or cold? Like iced It's tea? hot. It's oh, hot. Oh, and you drink that with a straw. Yes. Yeah. It's. Huh what is that talk to him he's um, he's okay he's all right yeah. i'm watching him <laughs> Good, got an eye on him. God, constant constant but boy do i like black tea i love yeah. black tea because it has a lot of flavor to it yeah uh-huh. i was on this green tea kick a long time ago because it's supposed to be good so good for you and all but it, there's not no flavor to it you know yeah yeah i'm not a big tea drinker myself Anne marie really likes tea but I'm, i do too I'm, more of a coffee guy i like it because you could do a lot of different kinds i got about five different kinds in my cupboard right now so that's Uh, nice yeah right 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 and of course i like a robust tea (laughs) (laughs) you and your robust yeah so hey (laughs) let's get started man i i wanted to see last we talked about possibly doing the three-day fast you threw that out to me that you did that because i was talking about going i was just sick of myself like i was on this kind of a extended period of eating bar food and drinking too much and all of that and i felt like i hit an all-time low of sloppiness where Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think i was doing what a lot of us do (laughs) well for i'm not bad for 56 years old and kept saying this to myself next thing you know i'm like "Ah, this is not acceptable and it happens fast mm, it does happen fast yeah it's sort of a my, my office or yours? I heard. Uh, I heard some noise back there, but yeah. uh, I don't see Charlie anywhere. No, he's doing fine. He's chewing on some stuff. Right. Um, so I have been for the last two weeks. I've been doing intermittent fasting and working out. Like I really, really taken my workouts a lot more seriously, and I probably worked out twelve out of the last thirteen or fourteen days. Good for you. So that's going very well. I've trimmed up a little bit. I'm on the right track and I decided I'm ready to do the fasting. Where do you stand? Okay. All right. Well, I didn't look into it at all. I mean, I, 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 I could, I, I want to find out what you learned on that whole thing because, sure. it, and I also want to find out about this intermittent fasting and what you're doing. Uh, I got a lot that. to share with yeah. you. Yeah, well, go lines. ahead. Okay. I'm going to look for for that uh, intermittent fasting here. Well, tell um, me, as you're doing that, mm-hmm. you said you've been doing it for a couple of weeks now. What, mm-hmm. what, what do you do? Haha, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I thought you had done it before. Maybe I have, Scott. but everybody's oh. got a d- whole different thing going on mm-hmm. there. Uh, but I just want to find out if you, you're doing it the way that I've done it in the past. I feel like I do it all the time anyhow, because mm-hmm. I, but I want to hear how, Mm -hmm. what what your routine is. Well, it's, uh, it's funny. There's a, an article that came out yesterday that I'm going to share with you. And it's about a study, uh, that was done. This is in the New York times and, uh, Oh, come on. Why did you not come up? 
one second. And uh, it really flies in the face of the whole idea of intermittent fasting. Now, oh. now let's explain it very briefly. And this is how it was explained um, in the article as well. And that is you basically take in an eight hour period uh, during a day where you can eat and supposedly you can eat anything. And I've heard a number of people say this, and that's, that's the charm of it. That's the allure to it. Like, ah, I'm going to eat pizza all day for eight hours, but only eight hours. And uh, I'm going to lose weight. And I have heard a lot of people tell me that a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've, uh, so, you know, I've taken from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. is when I can eat. I actually probably even go closer to 6 p.m. I just don't usually eat that late unless it's popcorn. I like to eat popcorn at night because it's light. But I'm taking just the 11 to 7 and that's when I eat. And, and it's bittersweet results. It's the first time I've ever really buckled down on this. And uh and I, I'm not taking it to the extreme. I, I'm going to caution people about the compulsive behavior. The problem that we have in this country so much is the compulsive behavior that the reward uh, system of, okay, uh, I'm going to only eat during eight hours, but I'm going to eat ice cream and pizza and French fries and stuff like that. You're going to just screw your body up and, mm -hmm. and keep yourself on a, in, a, in a compulsive mode the rest of your life. You're either going to be gaining weight or losing weight and back and forth, up and down. And it's really unhealthy. So I'm still eating very moderately healthy. I'm not eating really bad uh, at all. <laughs> There's Charlie. And, uh, and I have lost a few pounds, but it depends on when you weigh me. Here's the weird thing. Yeah. I come home from the gym. Like right now I go in and weigh myself and I'm going to be about two Oh four, which I haven't been in years. Okay. That's how right, I was right. the other day. Weigh me at six o'clock at night or eight o'clock at night. And I'm going to be like two ten, and I'm yeah. not going to be feeling good. And I'm going to feel like a lard ass. Uh, that's kind of the way this works because you're eating for eight hours or it's not like you're eating for eight hours solid, but that is during your eating period. Right. So you're a whole different thing from uh, morning to noon or 11 a.m. in my case, whole different ball game. If you feel great, you feel like, oh, I'm getting where I want to be until you start, you know, you're then you're starving. You have a big lunch and then uh, still thinking, well, you know, in a few hours I have some dinner and, you know, and you're not really in that hungry, but you know, you can't eat after seven. So you eat anyway. And so you feel kind of like a lard ass the rest of the day. So, mm, yeah. It works like that. I don't, and I do. So I, but I feel very prepared to do the fast because I've been, it's been, this has been a detox time. I've been eating uh -huh. very clean, right. uh, no drinking. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm not, a, never been a soda guy or anything like that. I don't have to worry about going into some kind of uh, detox shock of not right, having right. My high fructose corn syrup. Um, but okay, I want to back up to the intermittent fasting yesterday in the New York Times. Oh, yeah, I want to share this. I, I, I mean, what about that coincidence, the timing of this article to come out? Um, and okay, here it is. I do think this is it. And it debunks intermittent fasting. Do you see it now? Yeah. Scientists find no benefit to time restricted eating. And yeah, scientists find no benefit to time restricted eating. Hmm. Yeah. In a year long study, participants who can find meals to certain certain hours lost no more weight than those who ate at any time. Now, I read through this and I have to admit I did so kind of quickly. But what I got out of it and we could take a look at it is they the study was comparing people doing intermittent fasting to people who were doing other forms of dieting. Key being other forms of dieting. So it it seems to me a face value. It's like, well, if both forms of dieting are at work, I guess it's a matter of your preference as to which form of dieting, but both are losing weight is the mm -hmm, point. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. So let's just see studies that might support the time restricted. And they do, it, they do call this intermittent fasting. It comes up here somewhere. Um, 
Uh, let's see. People who follow the low calorie diet between the hours of eight and four or consume the same number of calories during the day during the day has failed to find an effect. Let's see. There's no benefit to eating in a narrow window. I, I'm, I'm halfway on board with that because of what I described as to well, it depends on what time of day you weigh me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. See, I don't know. Uh, I don't have time to read all of this, but yeah, not right now. But I'll share the link. But it, it's it's interesting because there's so many different and conflicting, you know, ideas of the best way to lose weight out there. And uh, you know, if you pick you pick your your method, there's always going to be somebody out there that says it doesn't work or it's not good for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that's just, just sort of the <clears throat> it's sort of the uh, the table stakes, pun intended, for any kind of uh, workout or diet. There's there's always going to be one guy that comes out and says, well, that's not good for you. It's just what I've experienced, at least. Yeah. And, and this guy, I, I remember reading this part, the Dr. Weiss, who uh, I think conducted the study, recalled that uh, he was like eight year uh, eight years worth of intermittent dieting said uh, he could hardly believe the results because it was kind of like a, a, a he was expecting to prove the effectiveness of intermittent uh, intermittent see. and it went the other way because yeah, he was a yeah. big proponent <laughs> so he, he asked this oh so he asked the statisticians to analyze the data four times until they finally told him they couldn't it wouldn't change the results he said, <laughs> i was a devotee and this is really hard to accept yeah now here's what i will say about it in the end is I'm going to continue. Well, I don't know if I'm going to continue it after my fast, uh, but I've, I've, uh, I think I've found benefit to, uh, uh, from it up to this point. Now I feel like I'm really ready for to do this fast. And after, I think what I'm going to do is just stick with the healthier lifestyle moderation. And I, I would suggest that that's what everyone does. It's what I said before, is we tend to be in a compulsive society where we look for compulsive ways to get back into shape and, and all of that. And, and the trick is, like, I feel like I've had the I've had to come to this point because I let myself go. I'm going to get myself back. I feel like I'm going to turn back time 20 years. I feel hmm. like at the end of this three days, I'm going to feel like I did 20 years ago. And I feel huh. like I'm on, I feel like I'm on target for that. I feel great about this. Uh, really positive. Going to also say about uh, the fasting thing, which we can continue. I have an article here. I want to share with you, which is okay. very interesting. All right. Yeah. And um, once you get through, I, uh, you get to a point of a tog of a top, a that, after like a day. And I think you even said this last week, yeah. like you were starving the first day and then you weren't the next day. I yeah. Think, you, 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 you get to a point where you get on the other side of it. It's sort of like, uh, when, like a marathon runner, they get to, yeah. they, they hit the wall and, but they, they push through it. And then suddenly they, they, they've got a new life. Yeah. Well, the, the more scientific way to put that is that you are done pulling from your stomach and uh, the immediate sugar there, once that's depleted and, and trick is the sugar, uh, then your body goes into autogoph autophagy where it's, it's now searching out uh, the fat in your body and the gunk on your cells and things like that and cleans mm -hmm. your body. So it's mm -hmm. no longer hungry because it, it found the new food source. Uh -huh. That's why you're not hungry. Right, right. And so I, I don't see I so for me to get through the first 14 hours or whatever, I can do that. And, and frankly, I could stand on my head for three days, I could do anything for three days. So I can do this. I'm, I'm more ex the benefits are more than just feeling uh, like your genes fit better, You're supposed to be much clearer headed. Like in every regard, you feel a lot better because you're cleansing your cells. And I probably should just go and pull up. Uh, I kind of I kind of really glossed over this article, but that's OK. Uh, let me find the one on the uh, fasting itself. And yeah, well, while you're looking for that, let me just say this, mm -hmm. that when mm -hmm. I did this, I, I wasn't doing it to, to lose weight. I was actually doing it uh, th because it had been suggested at church and they, they were going to do like a 
a 30 day fast. And I'm thinking, God, who could possibly do that? And I don't know if that actually is a should going to be good for you. I don't either. You should uh, see your doctor before thinking. Yeah. So so I wasn't going to do that because at that point, I'd never even gone 24 hours without eating. But I thought, okay, well, you know, they they talked about the spiritual aspect of this. And and uh, I that's what I was really looking for. And uh, but I can totally totally relate to this uh, clearing of your mind. And, uh, mm-hmm. but I really relate that also to uh, a closer relationship with God or, Certainly. or, or just more concentration on, on, you know, on, on your maker. And uh, boy, by the time I got to the end of that whole thing, like I said before, I felt fantastic. And it wasn't, it wasn't like a, a diet thing. It was more like a, a spiritual thing, but it, boy, it sure did. I think along both lines, you're going to feel great after you accomplish it. I agree with you completely. I definitely see the spiritual aspect in it. And it's accompanied with getting rid of a year's worth of toxins. Yeah. out of your cells. Yeah. So yeah. that is definitely going to bring you closer to your purity, closer to God. I can see that. Do you want to join me it. on this journey? I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I'm ready. At this you point. have to know. So yeah. I'm, I'm just going you're, to you're jump myself. into it. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Yeah. I cool. figured that's I think where you a, were. I think it's a good, uh, I think it's a good thing for you. To, I think it's a good thing for everybody to do at, at some point. I, well, it, I, I, slightly disagree because uh like lisa was like oh if you're gonna do it i'm gonna have to do that or something and it's like girl you got no body fat i i think it would be a bad thing for her to do health wise Mm -hmm. she just she's a super healthy person who already almost lives the the lifestyle of intermittent fasting heavy working out and stuff like that so i definitely would not recommend for her to do that and uh Boy, yeah. Well, and, he, and, and, and far be it for me to debate you on that one because you would know better than me. But I will say this: two people fasting at the same time might not be a good thing. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I think the, the partnership could happen. Could be good. Uh, well, you I got just... two really hungry people there that mm-hmm. could be irritable at the same time. That's all I'm saying. I just know that I need to stay in a zone of uh, the positivity, looking forward to, you know, the end results and the clarity. I mean, I'm just thinking about all the good things. I asked Lisa this morning to please stop throwing monkey wrenches into it. She's like, you got to wait for Merle. You got to, you know, what about this? We're supposed to have burgers tomorrow. I'm like, have, you know, and it's like, please just let it go. If you can't be supportive, don't be anything. But just this is why when I did it, I found a a really convenient time. I don't know if Anne Marie was out of town or what it was, but I did not let her know what was going on there. One second. Dog, what the hell is wrong with you? Jesus. Settle down, boy. Let's see. I'm sounded really like st- he was doing a little bit of construction back there. Yeah, he uh, started tearing, uh, trying to tear apart his cushion, brand new cushion because he oh, tore apart his. Oh, last that's one. nice, right? Yeah, those things yeah. are not cheap either. No, they're not. They're not. Yeah. So, so, so what I was saying, uh, it, it it's one of those things where I felt like I had to do this on my own, mm-hmm. really because of that reason. I didn't want anybody to jump in and tell me how to do it or what you're doing, doing wrong. this yeah. wrong, or maybe you should have this or any kind of, oh my gosh, are you okay? I, that, no, I didn't. I didn't want that. And here's the, th- the thing is in the Bible, it says, if you're going to do a fast, the, the way you do a fast Bible way is you don't tell people you're doing a fast. You just, because then, you know, you might only be doing it just so people will have pity on you or whatever. I don't know. This is just from, Oh, I totally do this. And, and it's, a, it's a journey that you're going on kind of by yourself. And there's something about that. That's kind of cool. Totally understand that. Um, I wanted to share this for the benefit of our listeners. And I think right, a lot right. of our listeners would be very interested and, to your point, there's a Buddhist principle. It's one of the 86 principles, I think, of the Tao Te Ching. And it's one that always stuck with me. And that is any selfless act you have to do without telling anyone. If you want, if you're looking for any recognition, well, now it's a selfish 
Uh, yeah, it's uh, you defeated the whole purpose. In the Bible, it says, "Don't let if you're giving, don't let let your left hand know what your right hand's doing." So even yourself, right. you know what I'm saying? Like you, right. you're not doing it to brag, even internally. To oh, I'm such a great guy because I did that. Very you know, cool. this is this is it's not about that. And if it is about that, then you're not gonna. The whole thing is is it, it works against you. That's exactly right. So. Once again, though, I want to do this for the benefit of our audience. And what I intend to do is I will, okay, so I'm going to eat tonight a, again, I'll share this article in a minute and hit some high, high highlights, but I'm going to eat uh, probably salmon and broccoli, stuff like that for my last meal tonight. It's uh, no refined sugars of it. I'm not going to eat bread or pasta or anything with refined sugars because that will take me longer to digest through that glucose to get to that point of autophagy. And I think that that is a state called ketosis. I think that I'm saying that right, but it's in this article that I need to reread again. And I will share, I will have the time and uh, the interest in sharing this in uh, more clarity over the weekend, right, Be- because right. I intend to just do my own recording in the morning of what I'm going through, what I'm going to do, the proper way that I, I have read about doing this. And then I will share, uh, I will go on again on video at night and share where I'm at at that night. And I expect tomorrow night to be in a, in a hungry place. But then I will do that in the next two mornings. Now I will put them together into one video. So I'm only going to do three videos of each day. All right. But they will include morning and night and I will post them. And if you are on our email list, you will get a link to that. If you care to follow along and see step-by-step what's going on. Right on Barry. I love that. That's pretty cool. Like I'm just imagining it with those videos are going to be like with hungry Barry. <laughs> I'll be like pulling myself <laughs> up from uh, the desk. This day <laughs> two. <laughs> and, uh, I, I kind of lost my voice. I don't know why. <laughs> hey, let me share this uh, article. And uh, I found a really great article from this dude and it's at Simland to eyes, simland.com. Three day fast benefits, hyphens, and I'll share the link. Uh, and he's this guy, uh, he's a fitness expert, I would say, and he's got excellent uh, 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 sources quoted at the end of this article. So mm-hmm. he's done it right, done it okay. uh, very professionally. So the three day fast, uh, I'm just going to try to hit uh, the highlights. Doing the intermittent fast, he's uh, he's into that. Great way to start, reaping benefits, uh, fasting, ketosis. Um, and the three day benefits, is it safe? Is it healthy? It's uh, Is it effective? The answer to all three is a big yes. There is, so, number one, there is cellular detoxification and repair. This is of great interest to me. Uh, our body doesn't uh, have the desire normally or need to conduct this cleansing normally because our bodies are in a state of um, digesting at all times here in America uh, these days. The main mechanism is autophagy. Autophagy is a metab- metabolic, metabolic pathway yeah. uh, that causes the organism to self, <laughs> this sounds terrible, self digest itself but it removes waste material from the cells. Autophagy is required to maintain lean body mass and actually inhibits the breakdown, inhibits the breakdown of muscle in adults. It also, because people worry, well, I'm gonna be eating my muscles. That's what I worry about if Lisa were to do it. She just doesn't have any, her body doesn't have anywhere else to go, but her muscles. So I don't really want her to do it, but it's also needed for healthy brain cell mitochondria. In the, the process, powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. Is that right? Yes. Oh, I'd like to hear that. In the process, inflammation throughout the body and overall oxidative uh, and overall oxidative stress get reduced. This fights against all in- illnesses and the best thing. It's the best thing about intermittent fasting. Increased levels of glucose, insulin, and proteins all turn off autophagy. Okay. So that is why I'm going to have that meal of like salmon and broccoli for my last meal tonight and not something that's going to introduce more uh, glucose. 
Uh, okay, even as little as three grams of the amino acid uh, leucine can do so. Okay, let's see. It takes up to 14 to 20 hours of not eating to get there. Uh, we need to deplete all the uh, gly 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 glycogen. glycogen glycogen stores that uh, they need to be depleted first. Number two, boosts growth hormone and retains muscle. That sounds terrific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, while fasting, the body shifts into a state of nutritional ketosis, which is characterized by the production and utilization of an increasing amount of fatty acids and ketone bodies. This will torch fat burning as you'll be drawing all of your fuel from the adipose tissue which I don't know what that is, but I would assume fat tissue. It also means that extended fasts aren't as catabolic as you might think. The biggest fear people have in regards with fasting is that they will lose their muscle. This won't happen because cotesis is an anti-catabolic state that, it, that decreases the body's need for glucose. Okay, so uh, then fasting triggers HGH which somebody at our age would really be interested in. Okay, it's the hormone responsible for the building, maintenance, and preservation of lean tissue, including skeletal muscle cells and organs. In fact, HGH increases within the first 16 hours by an astonishing 1,300 to 2,000% during this fast. Wow. Yes, only in extremely extended fast, such as 10 plus days, will you see HGH flattening. Now, you're not going to see me do any. I would be, I'm going to be interested, Merle, is if I feel so good from what I did and uh, surprisingly, like if I find it surprisingly easy, perhaps I, I'll do this every year at this about this time. <clears throat> okay, All right. I, sounds good. If that goes that way. I would right, like to try right. to build, We're gonna find out. Yeah, I'd like to try to build more of a following and maybe that uh, we encourage other people to follow along uh, in future fast, but we will also increase our knowledge, our education on doing it correctly. Okay, and number three, increased metabolism. Con contrary to popular belief, intermittent fasting doesn't slow the metabolism, uh, but actually increases it by 3.6%. After the first 48 mm. hours, after the first 40, even further four days in resting, resting energy expenditure increases up to 14%. Wow. Wow. All right. Um, that's impressive. Instead of slowing, I don't think that this should be called intermittent fasting. This should be called fasting because uh, we are generally calling intermittent fasting that whole every day, just an eight hour eight hour thing. Right, right. Right. So I am going to try to steer away from that verbiage. So we don't get confused instead of slowing right. down the metabolism, fasting boosts your metabolism and puts it into a higher gear temporarily. I'm looking forward to this. This is probably caused by increased adrenaline so that we have more energy to go out into the Savannah to find some food. Okay. Let's see better, better, Number four, better biomarkers. There are a host of be health benefits accompanied by the leave of food. The key contributing factor to this is insulin. It, you know, I'm, I'm going to just break in here and say there's so many people that are barely diabetic with type 2 diabetes that happens later in life because of uh, uh, obesity and, uh, and even in a pre-diabetic stage that could reverse that with just a, a little bit of uh, a focused turn in health, uh, this kind of fasting, mm, rate, mm. get on uh, a treadmill and do the hit exercise, the high intensity interval training that when oh, you yeah, do yeah. that <clears throat> or fast, uh, as long as you can for 30 seconds and then slow down and then right, do, right. And then do it again. That pulls the uh, sugar out of your body, out of your muscles. Mm, mm. You could reverse that with uh, just a little concerted effort. Like as we're talking about here and here in America, we really need to start talking about that. But the problem is, is we got such a, Oh, don't body shame me. <laughs> you know? Well, that's, that's certainly true. There's a balancing act to that. No, you don't want to bully people. That increases uh, the anxiety that is associated with their addiction in the first place. So they go and bury themselves into a, a chocolate cake. Uh, but there's a balance to it too. This whole uh, um, acceptance, this total uh, unconditional acceptance of this unhealthiness is leading to 
heart problems and uh, all kinds of different things that are associated with obesity. So uh, diabetes, of course, loss of limbs as a result of that, nothing is good about that. So we need to find the balance. We need to get healthier here, people. Okay. Um, let's see. Fasting will fight diabetes and lower blood sugar levels. It will improve insulin sensitivity, meaning it makes your insulin work more effectively, reduces insulin resistance, reduces cholesterol, and uh, promotes the growth of stem cells. Many sh studies also show how caloric restrictions and fasting promote lifespan. I'm sure of that. And uh, in number six here is protection against cancer and tumors. This I found very interesting. On a similar note, autophagy can also purge precancerous cells and cause the uh, apoptosis, cellular, cellular death of malignant tumors. This gets triggered by fasting for an extended period of time. That kind of makes sense to me when I think about it. Yeah, you, you, you starve them out. There you, well, you, it's not just that. It's when you take the typical glucose and typical food source away from your body, and it goes looking throughout your go, looking throughout your body for other things to eat. Well, m lastly, being muscle, it kind of makes sense that it's going to chip away at uh, malignant tumors and precancerous cells. It makes perfect sense to me. In mm -hmm. fact, Dr. Dominic Diagnos Diagnostino is a leading expert in the field of re the research on cancer, fasting, and nutritional ketosis. He advises everyone to have a therapeutic fast that lasts for three to five days, two to three times per year. Remember, I mentioned that Bill Maher does do that, five-day mm. fast, two to three times per year, which I find crazy, but I haven't done the three-day one yet. So we'll see. In so doing, you're conducting deep cellular cleansing, that will reduce the risk of cancer by a huge margin. Even if you're healthy, you would still want to take some preventative measures towards disease. Uh, I think that, I, I totally believe that that's true. Number seven, neurodegenerative disease. This is of huge interest to me. Fasting also increases levels of a hormone called brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, a deficiency of which has been implicated in depression and various other similar problems. I've had my bouts of depression. New brain neurons get formulated, which is a process called neurogenesis. What's more, neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to form neural connections, benefits, benefits from this as well due to BDNF. All that being said, fasting bolsters brain power and gives protective neurodegenerative disease uh, pr protection from neurodegenerative degenerative disease while mitigating cognitive decline. This is a major reason why I want to do that, to be perfectly honest. Length and lifespan, I think, yes, uh, we know that that's going to happen. So three-day fasting without getting hungry. After all these benefits, how do you feel? It's an imp uh, do you, is there a still an impending feeling of resistance and fear? Yeah, of course there is. Or have you overcome the feeling that fasting is bad and dangerous? I'm rather excited, but with fear and <laughs> impending doom. Whatever the case, you'll probably still want to know actually how to do it. So here's how you do it. The night before, have a low carb dinner. This is what I was talking about. So your gly glycogen stores would be depleted already. This will make your body enter into ketosis faster and induce autophagy that much quicker, which means I'm good. If, if I do the opposite and I do the typical compulsive thing, I'm going to gorge on hamburger and fries and sodas uh, because I won't be able to eat for three days. Mm. You're going to be starving the next day as your body feasts on all of the uh, glycogen. So I am definitely not going to do that because I don't want to starve any more than I have to. I don't want it to be more painful than it needs to be. Wake up the following morning and drink a cup of water with a pinch of salt in it. So this will uh, kind of retain your water a little bit, replenish your electrolytes and reduce cortisol. Wait one to two hours and have a couple of green tea or herbal tea. Black tea has more caffeine in it. So uh, you may want to wait slightly longer longer for that. I don't know. I think that I am going to have a bit of coffee and black tea. That's just two of my favorite things, but it does not appear that it will inter uh, interfere with that, uh, the glycogen problem. 
So uh, drinking sparkling water is also an amazing way to reduce hunger to, uh, to zero. So I definitely need to um, stock up on that. I do have, uh, I just bought, uh, not thinking about this whatsoever, but what is that stuff called? That's basically sparkling water with just a hint of a flavor to it. Well, any sparkling water has lots of flavors. Perrier has uh, lime and they've got all kinds of other ones. I got a real popular. Oh, I got it right here. I got it for after 11 o'clock. I brought one up. Oh, this one is called Pure Aqua. There's another big name for the brand. And it is a sparkling water. I don't know if I can actually have that. It's a flavored sparkling water with natural flavors. Filter ingredients, filtered carbonated water and natural flavors. I that's just, usually about all that's in those sparkling okay. waters unless they've added sugar to it i uh, but, i could have this there's no yeah. sugar no uh zero percent juice uh, i'm a big sparkling water guy i love uh perrier cool. lime uh it's got yeah. I can have this. And I'll, I've heard some some have told me that there's sodium in there, but I don't see that in the ingredients list. And then I no heard, sodium oh, zero. They just don't list it on there. Yeah, there's zero milligrams. Sodium's listed zero milligrams. Zero yeah. milligrams of sugar. Zero milligrams of every. There's zero milligrams of everything. Yeah, there's nothing. I love there. it. Yeah, yeah so I'll be good. drinking. That's that. a good one to drink. Yeah, and uh, to get the if you get your first uh, real hunger sign, drink some more water. Wait fifteen minutes if feeling subsist. Then have a cup of black coffee. I'll be doing that. You, uh, my brother tells me a lot of times your body sends you signals that you're hungry, but you're really thirsty. Uh, oh, that's uh, sure. I could see water that. actually is a miracle. Okay, the maximum coffee consumption while fasting should be two to four cups of coffee per day because it dehydrates you. I'm going to be very hydrated. I always have something on. I'm always hydrated. And I'm a two, big to, two to four shouldn't be too much of an impediment for anybody. I mean, four cups of coffee is a lot. Uh, not to me, it's not. I drink I, six That's about how much I more. drink every day. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I drink about six um yeah fine. maybe maybe i do i don't count maybe i do too i don't know mm. i know when my, well, when i know. have a load of espresso i love i've got an espresso oh, maker yeah. holy cow i love making I those those too. are so good yeah that's concentrated <laughs> coffee right there but you so know good. also when you say a cup of coffee an actual truly measured cup is pretty small yeah you know? it really is like you're, this you're right. i call you're this right. a cup it's actually yeah. three, three cups yeah yeah i hear what you're saying so i have two of these in the morning oh my gosh oh. this is still going on what? What do you? I, do we I still have more of this article? Oh yeah, just a little bit, just because this is interesting. Avoid sugars and sweeteners, eh, whatever. But I like this advice: be productive, do pay, paperwork, read books, write write something. Good time for me to do a case study. I've been Boy, there's really do. that's really a, a good one. You know, here's yeah, something: if you're trying to break something or break some kind of habit. In this case, you know, you eat every day. Yeah. The best thing to do is because your your brain can really only focus on one thing at a time. Just keep yourself occupied with something get get up and go for a walk do something mm -hmm. uh this is great advice i think I, I i do too i'm definitely going to do that i'm going to do some writing some things i've had uh, on the back burner go for a walk don't, oh, don't I'll... read a menu that that would be <laughs> that's funny <laughs> uh, don't design one either You're right. <laughs> uh, and uh, i'll be walking charlie for sure i'm supposed to waterproof our fence out back this weekend uh as long as it doesn't we're, we've got a good a decent chance of some rain hey, overnight i wanted to ask you Ooh. something and when you got charlie and i mean obviously it that forces a, a bit more physical activity did oh, yeah. that have an impact on you when you got no. him no uh, disappointingly no because for sure i'm getting 14 hours of extra exercise per week right working. right and so i, I mean that's a lot anything. yeah it is a lot and i thought within <laughs> you would think in two months eight weeks you should have right. a noticeable difference and no i didn't i personally I did not remember when i got stella it made a tremendous difference but i hadn't i'd been not i'd, I'd been on a hiatus this as far as working out right well there you I go that's selling. a big difference See, yeah I, you're right but I go to the gym you were pretty like, normal pretty regular right right but still it's still extra exercise during a part it's a of lot the day. of extra 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 yeah. exercise so i was disappointed it's hard in to that. say 
Yeah. 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 Okay. So here's a, here's a good one uh, that I want people to be aware of. Use apple cider vinegar. I may have to get some of that to stray off hunger. Once it gets too difficult, get a glass of warm water and add one to two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, which actually I do think is very good. Um, any more than that would have some unwanted consequences. Don't go overboard. You know, uh, when I did my fast, I found this, uh, there was a formula that had like cayenne pepper in it and, and just some water and, and you squeeze some lemon in there too. And you drink that. I mean, nice. it was like a miracle uh, how that took away my hunger. That that's really, that's a good one too. There's more than one way. Brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. I'm probably going to do that at least three times a day because it will get the gumminess out of your mouth type of thing. Oh, oh, I got Mm -hmm, you. Okay. mm -hmm. I'm like, like, how is that? (laughs) All the gumminess that builds up in your mouth. Uh, I thought it was to take away your hunger. Well, I think that would in a sense. It It, would. Just, yeah, just to cleanse your mouth. I'm so hungry. Let me go brush my teeth. I think cleansing your mouth would have something to do. At the 20 hour mark, you can have a glass of, here you go to your point, a glass, Uh, a warm glass of lemon water. And I liked your idea with the cayenne pepper. I think that's a great idea or bone broth. There's your bone broth, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have the bone broth. Adding a teaspoon of ginger turmeric. I have ginger turmeric tea Um, and cinnamon. That sounds horrible. Very cleansing. Uh, I love both ginger and turmeric. Uh, the tea is okay. Yeah. Kind of separate is better. Like su- I would think, you know, sushi and you get that little piece of ginger that you, you can put yeah. on there and then put in, in the uh, wasabi and soy sauce. Right. Oh God. I I'm not that. a big ginger fan. I love ginger. I think it's a very understated thing. I make a couple times a year during the winter, I'll make a vegetable chicken soup from scratch and mm. I'll put a big piece of ginger root in there. I shave it all peel it so to speak and right. put it down there in the bottom and it's kind of the secret ingredient it's so healthy for you too mm. okay to be honest the first 24 hours are the only difficult part of the extended fast and this That's is what i due- found yeah i'm glad to hear that i'm looking forward to that this is due to your body still being geared towards burning its own gly- glycogen supply after this gets depleted you enter a deeper state of ketosis and gain access to the your abundant fuel stores it's kind of like your body flips a switch you know Mm -hmm. or like when you hear your motor on your on your car go into overdrive it's Mm kind of the same thing that happens to your body okay at this point merle there's the day two and the day three and i'm just going to save all that because i'll like i said i'll do separate videos and i will talk about that as i'm starting to approach them and go through them and i'm probably boring the pants off of some people anyway so let's uh let's move on kind of kind of important stuff i think for 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 everybody and uh it and i'm sure if you're like me and you know before i did this you've always been curious about well what's this like and how are people actually doing this and yeah and it's pretty cool actually it's uh it was prior to doing my research i thought it was terrifying i thought the prospect yeah. was terrifying now i'm actually kind of excited i'm i just got to get through tomorrow you know yeah yeah the one day and you get and i think keeping yourself occupied is a big deal uh yeah. you know if you find yourself not doing anything and you're bored then you have time to think about it mm. and that kind of works against you so right. you know keep stay active do your thing you know i just wanted to say since the challenge that you put out there i decided you know well you know since I, let me just say this that since we moved it has been so difficult to get into like my uh, some kind of a routine. You got to find and, it. Yeah, and uh, and and we've you know we've been so disoriented with, with our kitchen. We we moved into a, a a much smaller space as far as far as the kitchen goes, and we have not organized that. So that means that there's a lot Ooh. less cooking going on Ooh, in there, that's a bad and a lot. Thing. A lot more like let's find foods that we could just pop in the oven or pop in the microwave. And that's just not working for me. It's not working for either one of us. So Mm -hmm. 
we we're we're working on getting that fixed uh and that's coming along fine but at the same time i'm like i got to get myself into you know my own exercise routines and as i mentioned last week i'm i'm getting on my bicycle so uh since we spoke last i i've gone on five really great bike rides nice and, yes and uh boy i went on one last and I, I, i've been riding at night to two because no, it's pretty, i love it's pretty that. warm and i've got Peaceful. the 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 front lights and the rear lights and the reflection reflective stuff and here's the cooler part too is here where i live i kind of live on the outskirts of town so it's very country out here I mean, get on the road at night no one's on the road that's great it is awesome. now if and when a car does go by what i worry about more than anything these days are texters and right. not really paying attention. Do you have enough width in the road that you feel comfortable? Yeah, because all of the roads that I'm on have like a bicycle lane. That's the oh, other great thing that's about great. down here is that there's bicycle lanes all over the place, which is great. Also, I have a on my bicycle helmet, I've attached a, a rear view mirror so I could see these guys yeah. approaching me. Not much you can do as they're passing you, but you can kind of get a clue as they're approaching you, you know, and uh, and Anyhow, so that gives me some some peace of mind as well. I've also want to ask you quickly: Do you ahead. do a technique such as taking up most of the lane until they get fairly close, then move over into your bike lane? No, I do I not do that. Just that. Well, I do see now if I do that and I don't see them coming up behind me, uh, then I could put myself in danger that way as well. Okay. So I stay very constant. I don't want to make sudden moves or anything like that. And I, 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 I've had car wars before where people get mad. I found for personally night riding, the best thing to do is I've got my flashing light back there, stay in my lane, don't move out of the lane. Uh, I found that to be the safest way for me. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, so last night I went on this great ride and there are these trails that go through the golf course. It was black as ink last night. And uh, it, I went, when I got to the trail, it was almost kind of spooky, yeah. <laughs> which was really yeah. kind of fun. And th there were all of these jackrabbits that were on the trail that uh, I don't know. Have you seen a jackrabbit before? They have these great big ears. They're, they're almost like yeah, alien looking. Mm -hmm. And so it was just a fun ride. I've been enjoying this. It's a great thing. I, I uh, jumped on the scale right after we talked last week to, to make that my measuring yeah. point. And I lost a half a pound <laughs> this well, week doing it. So okay. you know, not, not, the, not the greatest poundage results, but I can't tell you that I'm feeling a lot more energy oh, yeah. and, a, and a lot more spry when it comes to that. I'm already feeling, I was riding before this, but now I'm more consistent. I'm already feeling more energy uh, on my bike as well, which is a great sign. So I just figure if I keep that activity going, fix the thing happening in the kitchen. Yes. I'll start to see results, but I'm telling you just doing the activity makes me feel pretty darn good. I think that's, that's awesome. You're right about the kitchen thing. When you are throwing things that are microwavable, you're probably eating tons of preservatives. And probably. And with I mean, that and what we found though, Barry is um, I've got this supermarket down the street that they make these fresh meals uh, that day. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that's what we've been trying trying to stick to that but still you know, nothing beats doing it yourself you don't know what they're putting in there but it's but it is pretty good hey i just this is really switching gears but i i forgot about this yesterday did you see this news about mike tyson beating this guy up on I an did. airplane i did see that yeah, um, I'm trying to pull it up. And wouldn't you know, it's just spinning and spinning. So you know what? I'm not even going to give it the time of day. Don't even. Yeah, don't even play that. I'm not. It, here's the thing. I, I watched that. It, first off, it everybody should know not to taunt Mike Tyson. You would or, think. But did you like, see it, that guy? It, he had the like most punchable he had the most yeah, punchable I face him. I ever saw. I probably would want to yeah. take that guy's butt oh, back yeah. there. You, oh, yeah. you saw him back there and he's he was standing up in his chair and he's like leaning over and he's saying all this stuff to Mike Tyson. And, you know, it, it looked like Mike Tyson was trying to avoid him and the guy's doing all these theatrics. Look, the guy has a tattoo on his face. What do you? 
he doesn't have any respect for his face. What do you think he's going to do to your face? Right. And, and when I saw the video of him, I mean, that looked like Mike Tyson, like on it, like when he was kind of moving. That's Mike Tyson on a stroll. He's hardly <laughs> doing anything right there. Right. If Mike right. Tyson wanted to hurt that guy, that guy would have yeah. been. All right. So I'm just saying the guy got up easy. Just leave Mike Tyson alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I would do. But what are your thoughts on that? I don't have a lot of thoughts other than that guy got what he deserved. I and thought so too. For yeah. sure. For we sure. didn't see the whole context. I saw I saw the film and it seemed to be missing some stuff there. But uh, I it, saw those pictures that you were talking about. And I think I would have punched him, too. Yeah. You know, and I remember like at the end, he's like because he was all like arrogant and everything in the video. And then at the end, he's all with a. Yeah. Face looking, doing straight. his victim face. Yeah. yeah. And it, but I noticed his collar because he had a nice cut, tight collar like this. But in the end, it was, it was all down here. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Uh, uh, hey man there's some other interesting things in the news that i wanted to bring up such as yeah. oh this is a shock cnn plus the streaming service is shut down only three weeks after its 300 million dollar launch because only 150,000 people signed up uh, 200 uh, reporters and big name hosts like chris wallace and eva longoria are out Wow. Okay, so I who saw that coming? Crystal I, I, and Sagar been talking about the impending doom of a failure for two months leading up to it. Yeah, I mean, I think about half of the population here in this country could have guessed that that was going to yeah. happen. But I mean, when you take a look at Chris Wallace, and I, 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 he's been such a disappointment to me. Um, you know, and I think, I think his father would have been ashamed, uh, Mike Wallace, of, right. you know, really the pandering that he does, uh, it's not journalism anymore. And Eva Longoria is not a journalist. She's right. an actress. What, what, what would you really, you, you think, anyway, I think, the, I think they got what they deserved. Well, I totally agree in other news. Uh, and then there's Disney. We'll come back to that because all, all these in some way or another are interrelated in my You're head. right. You're exactly right. This one. Netflix stocks plunged 30% and heads for biggest drop in a decade. The streaming giant sheds 200,000 subscribers as viewers complain there's nothing to watch. And it's too, they just raised the prices. And it's too expensive and they have no interest in Harry and Meghan's lectures. Not to mention Obama's. They didn't put that in that headline. Interesting. Uh, dude, I, it's a long time coming. You saw it coming for a long time. I've seen how woke it's gotten in, in general, you know, and um, here's what I really see that happened that they didn't see happening, but HBO Max saw happening. Uh, so Netflix just dropped the final uh, segment of Ozark, their mm -hmm. biggest thing. I mean, right. Absolutely you, awesome. That's your fan of that show, right? Hugely a, a fan. Now it's done. There's nothing else on Netflix. And what does HBO Max do? They push up the release of the Batman that just came out. It's now on HBO Max if you subscribe. I just subscribe. Right, right. Oh, HBO Max is awesome. Dude, I've I, been a big fan ever since I got so it. So what's everybody doing? You know what I'm thinking now? I'm mm -hmm. not going to keep carrying additional streaming services. One's got to go. Right. Netflix. Which, there it goes. That's what <laughs> HBO Max knew what they were doing. They well, Everything I just they said, You're they're, right. they're going to, you know, <laughs> Netflix is going to shoot, shoot, shoot it all out with um, Ozark. And then they're going to be done. They got nothing else. And we're going to come out with the Batman. Everybody's going to want to subscribe at least for one month because of that, which is what I did. And then you look at their programming like, oh, my God, this is so much better than Netflix. That's yeah. what happened. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because I, I had Netflix a few several years ago. And then when I found out they picked up uh, Obama, I, I got out of there just because I thought, well, now they're going to politicize everything. Right. And sure enough, that's exactly what they did. And this is what happens when you do that. People don't want that. And right. finally, just like we've been talking about for all this time, that people are going to get tired of this and they're going to leave. That's 
That's what happened to CNN Plus. That's what's happening to Netflix. That's what's happening to Disney now. We'll talk, like you said, we'll talk about it. Mm-hmm. It's a, it happened to Coca Cola and Delta and the major Major League Baseball back a, a, a year ago when they had the the whole debacle with the all-star game and this is what happens when these huge companies weigh in on the political side and they forget about the customer that they're and the product that they're that they're serving the customer with right totally and i'm just going to say when we end wind up um i want to do a little review on the batman which i watched over the last two nights okay all right well uh, okay that's i like- want you now i'm just going to uh where did it go the disney thing um i wanted to talk about that a little bit yeah. but i, I kind of lost it do you have that anything on that Come well on. i do i mean uh just uh just yesterday we had a there was a disney got a big punch in the nose here mm-hmm. because they they uh they had a uh, <clears throat> disney has been benefiting fitting from something called the Reedy Creek Improvement District. This has exempted Disney from numerous regulations and taxes and fees, which reportedly, Barry, it saves the company tens of millions of dollars per year. Tens of millions. Oh, God. And uh, now they, the, the Disney. But isn't that, wouldn't that be Florida's uh, like state income tax or something? They don't well, have income tax. Right? Well, either that's right. They don't have state income tax. And here's the thing is with Disney, they've been given some, much like sports teams that get lured into town and they give them tax abatements. This is this is what happened with Disney. And they've been getting this huge tax abatement every year, which has equal profits for Disney. Now Disney's poked the bear. Yeah. And uh, and yeah. DeSantis is a guy that's just not going to play around. <clears throat> and this is what you to his own detriment as well, because Disney, believe it or not, is a huge uh, c- campaign supporter of the Republican Party in Florida. And DeSantis himself has benefited from the Disney Disney dollars. But this is a line that he's drawn where he's saying, look, you know, you're, you're a constituent of mine, but you've gone You've gone a mile too far here with this, and, uh, yeah. and and they've made it into something that it absolutely has was never intended to be. The don't say gay bill. And it doesn't <laughs> say. And the funny thing, it doesn't say gay in the bill uh, or the law. So it's it's funny, and uh, but you you're seeing all this fighting around it. I saw the video last night of the vote being taken in the Florida Senate. Did you see that, Barry? No. Outrageous. Yeah, the, the, there were people that were there in the legislature. This was last night that were screaming at the top of their lungs during the whole procedure. Uh, they were there to protest this whole thing. You might as well get a bunch of kindergartners in the room uh, yeah. just to just scream out. Who knows what the heck they were saying? They sounded like like, like rabid, uh, like like animal animals. I mean, I'm not trying to be insulting, but that's what it sounded like. Yeah, it's, it I sounded know. so out of control. Like, come on. Then there's the Jen Psaki thing. Did you see that this week where she breaks down in tears over no. the don't say gay bill? Didn't see her breaking down in tears. Tell me about this. Uh, well, uh, it's this, I actually have video of it, but I don't just. And you froze for the it's first. Not time. really worth playing, but mm. she was be, she was being asked about the the. She was being asked about the Florida bill. That's actually why I'm not going to play it. Um, oh. And she says, oh, I get really emotional about this. They're just, this is just a terrible thing. It's, it's horrible what they're doing. They're just, they're bullying kids with this. It's just bullying. And, uh, you know, in their bullying parents, parents, it's just like two loving parents with a child and they're just coming against them with hatred. And it's like, wait a second. Wow, how that's are, complete how they, manipulation. How are they? Bu- it, it's also devoid of fact. Uh, yes. She's not saying, here's how they're bullying kids. Here's how they're bullying parents. But it is the Biden administration that chose to uh, to 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 target parents that were concerned about what their children were being educated with in the schools during the past year. And they actually sicked the FBI on them uh, under 
terrorist uh, under under threats of terrorism, um, if you'll recall. So who's doing the bullying of two parents that love that, that love each other for kids? Ah, it's just, it just seems so hypocritical. What's going on in the fake crying over this whole thing? Come on. I, I guess I'm going to have to look that up as much as I it'll kind of make me cringe. But nah, you know what? I don't think I am going to. I don't want to see that. But th- that burns me up. It, it's it's crazy that the this whole thing and uh, even this week uh, Obama comes out you know he's coming out of his shell uh, talking about he's him and his, the Obama Foundation are going to be going after <clears throat> misinformation and in the media and these guys it's censorship are the, these guys are the the kings of misinformation the, the kings of misinformation um the whole they really are. And so anyway, it just the hypocrisy in, is, is so crazy going on out there. But this, the Disney thing is, is, is related to so many other things. Um, I, I, uh, I just think, you know, you, you and I have talked about this so much over the past year, the huge risk that these companies are taking by, by, by choosing to go down this political line. And, and you're seeing how it's impacting their customer base, but they've not seemed to care. Here's a, here's a story here from the Wall Street Journal uh, regarding this. Uh, Republic, this is what they're saying. Republican voters who've watched companies side with the progressive agenda and silence employees who disagree are fed up. Disney's political foray didn't stop the, the Florida law, but it made a lot of people mad, including Disney customers and state lawmakers. There's a warning here to other companies, especially big tech and Wall Street, which are mainly based in liberal states but conduct business everywhere. They try to impose their cultural values. They risk losing Republican allies on the policy issues that matter most to their bottom line, such as regulation, trade, taxation, antitrust, and labor laws. And here's Hugh Hewitt saying, bravo to Disney and or to DeSantis. If Disney wants to play politics, it should expect political consequences. The same thing happened to Delta, Coca-Cola, Major League Baseball when they dove into Georgia's voting reform debate. You get what you ask for. And Agreed. that's what's happening. That's what happens with that. What happened with CNN. Uh, that's what happened with these other companies. And now we look at Twitter and yeah. look at what's happened with this whole thing. Is there something uh, more lately on that? Because I haven't heard yes. any much this week. Please, please. Well, this week, everything changed. Um, we know that uh, I think last week we were talking about the fact that he had the 9%. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, very quickly over the weekend, what happened was that uh, he was going to be on the board. And uh, he made a decision. Uh, well, they, they're both kind of saying both sides are saying that they made the decision for him not to be on the board. But that opened up uh, an, a possibility for Elon Musk to just basically purchase the company and, and have the complete control over the company. So that's what he did. Now, uh, over- one thing happened in between there, and that happened. It broke the morning of our show last week. That, and I mentioned that Vanguard came in. They panicked. Vanguard is the, the odds came from behind the curtain and came out and purchased 10.5 percent shares so that they could have a l- tiny bit more than elon did which then forced elon to go into plan b mode which is how do i do a hostile takeover which right is where you're at. and yeah. so then the poison pill and the uh the poison pill is the the process that twitter had available to them to prevent a hostile takeover and basically the way that it works is that Twitter then can now offer shares of stock at reduced prices to really flood the market with shares. So it would make it harder for Elon Musk to go ahead and, and, and make that, that purchase. But it, it goes back to this, Barry. Um, I was reading some articles by Jonathan Turley. I really like that guy. And he was talking about the fact that the, the board could, is potentially putting themselves in a legal a litigation situation where uh, obviously Elon Musk buying the buying the company for the amount of money that he would buy it for is a boon for the shareholders because mm-hmm. he's going to buy those shares at a, a, a price much higher than the stock price is right now. And um, 
the the board is supposed to be there to to ensure profitability to the shareholders that's that's their number one responsibility legally and by not taking that offer and taking the poison pill uh, option uh, they could be facing some serious issues i think there's a bigger issue here barry and you and i talked about this before the fact that and we talked about this on friday the decision to block Elon Musk in this particular situation where it benefits the shareholders is a clear sign that the people on the board are not, this isn't about preventing Elon Musk from taking over. This isn't about uh, being careful about profitability. This is about their intense interest in controlling speech and censoring speech is it's what activism. This is looking at looking mm -hmm. like right now. For sure. It's disgusting. And this well, stuff, we'll see what happens. You know what? So what we've been talking about for about the last 15 minutes is all the exposure of all of this kind of thing and how it's not working out so well. It isn't working out. It's not right. working out at all. It's crushing them. And we've been seeing this, Barry. You and I have been talking about this for the past couple of years, the, the damage that this has done mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to these large bastions of information sources like the New York Times, like the Washington Post. Uh, they've been very hurt by this political activism, yet it doesn't seem to be slowing them down in any way. Look at CNN. They just... They just you know, tossed away $300 million. It's, it's, that's not sustainable. How long can they manage doing this? Who's right. propping these guys up? Who's paying that bill? Who, who, I right. guess to be continued on that whole thing. Right. All right. I think we should try to lighten this thing up a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I am just going to share a quick movie review about the Batman. And uh, nobody cares too much what I had to say since it's been covered extensively in, in uh, national news. But I want to say, I want to say that it's a very enjoyable movie. It's a very good movie. It's a different. What I like about Batman in the in the general sense is it's a palette that each director, each visionary takes in a different direction. It's just a, it's a tool that you know, somebody can craft it. It's, it's like a, it's like a piece of clay and you shape it as you want. And Matt Reeves, the latest director did a completely different take than anyone else has in the past. So, you know, in the, the original inspiring, um, what's that creepy uh, director's name that did it in the late eighties. Uh, can't remember. Ed he also did Edward Scissorhands as Tim Burton. Oh, you're right. Uh, right. He did it's such creepy. an amazing yes amazing job with those original ones of creating a, a unique world. Uh, it's not realistic. And that's a good thing. You can suspend disbelief and enter this world and be like entertained. And even Gotham City kind of was a character in and of itself. And the whole thing read like a play. It really seemed like a, I was watching a play. And I just really appreciated hmm. that about yeah. Tim Burton's take on it. And then Chris, uh, Christopher Nolan took it totally 180 the opposite way and brought it into modern day reality and it and those movies look like they were taking place in like chicago and huh. yeah totally based on modern day reality and now but boy christopher uh nolan could not do a fight scene to save his life that that was the bad part but uh <laughs> Matt, that's kind of important for kind Batman. of important in that movie <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he did a great movie. He did his writing. He's always been known for very intelligent writing. And boy, that's for sure. Uh, Matt Reeves did a whole new take on it. The most gritty version and realistic version of Batman to date. Super dark. And um, and Bruce. Is that Wayne, the new the new one? The it's new been... one just came okay. out. Right. And uh, the Bruce Wayne aspect is almost non-existent. Uh, Bruce Wayne actually has does not care about his real life persona whatsoever. He's just driven by vengeance, very dark. Uh, doesn't, he's very suicidal even like he doesn't, I don't want to say he's uh, put a gun to his head. He does not care about dying. And, um, and, but most of okay. all, most of all, I want to say that, uh, uh, so, um, you know, the whole the talk has been, of course, about, well, how did Robert, Robert Patterson do as Batman? He was this Twilight uh, star and all of that. Huh. Young guy. Yeah. And he does a fine job. 
but there's not much to do. He's just a really dark brooding character without a lot of emotion or depth to him. The scene stealer by far is Zoe Kravitz. And it pains me to say that just because of the nepotism. I hate nepotism. She's had every break handed to her. Talk about privilege. She's born into privilege. And so, so she's had every, uh, every opportunity handed to her. But damn it, does she capitalize on it? She's the scene stealer of the movie, along with secondarily Colin Farrell as the penguin who is Hmm. absolutely unrecognizable. Um, And I don't know why they just didn't get some New York guy that looked like this um, because Colin Farrell, actually, I have a picture of him somewhere. We uh, all pretty much know what he looks like. And he looks like this good looking guy, kind of, you know, younger on the younger side, Zoe Kravitz. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would, I would not have recognized him in that other picture. Right. Oh, oh dude, wow. they, they talked about the crew going wow, out look to at that. restaurants and stuff. He's totally, nobody ever recognized him. So he's and, the penguin. Yes. And okay. I like, is, I like this. You like this version better than way the, better uh, than the da- Danny DeVito sure. thing. Well, the, again, yeah. that was just yeah. different. It was just yeah. different. It was that was more fantasy. It was more cartoon like, right? The, cor- for, correct, for sure it was. He was so good and so convincing in that role, and you never, ever, ever would have believed that that was uh, Colin Farrell for a minute. His New York no, accent. No, I never would have guessed that, right? And um, Patterson did a fine job, but again, Zoe Kravitz was the scene stealer. Just her acting was just off the charts. Uh, that's again Colin Farrell. Patterson and uh, Zoe Kravitz. So I just really recommend it from that point of view. It, some people might find it a little slow when it's a three hour movie, which is why oh, I watched it. Wow. Two nights. Three hours. Um, wow. I'll watch it again, though, at some point, probably maybe with Lisa, but uh, and probably again in two to three settings. Uh, but I really, really enjoyed it for the different take that it was. Ah, very nice. Very nice review there. And what was the name of the movie again? Simply The Batman. The Batman. And this yeah. can be seen now HBO on HBO uh, Max. HBO Max, our favorite. Sign now. up. Get rid of yeah. Netflix and sign up. That's what I, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Very yeah. cool, Barry. All right. Hey, you want to slip in an after show? Did you have something? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Let's go ahead. Okay. All right, everybody. Sign up at over 50 starting over. You'll get my fasting tips or updates uh right there if you sign up there and all the other good stuff over 50 starting over.com we'll and wait you you're gonna yet. be doing this fast this weekend so good luck to you lisa <laughs> 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 all right, all right.